Hi guys, in this lesson we'll discuss just an introduction I guess to hand planes, a few of my kind of thoughts on the matter and then the importance of flattening, flattening the underside of the plane and um, also flattening the underside of the chisel and how the kind of what type of technique I kind of use to do this. Um, if you'd like to um, see more content like this and be notified of other videos and tutorials that we post from the school then um, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell and then you'll get a little message when, our, um, yeah, when we upload a video. Okay, so this will be, like as I mentioned before, this will be kind of flattening. Flattening, it will be flattening of chisels. So it's just flattening in general. That's what we're going to kind of go through kind of now. So let me just take this one apart as well. So it will be flattening this as well. And will we go through the anatomy of the tool? Yeah, okay, yeah, no, we'll go through that. I just didn't want to do too much, otherwise I'll just kind of bombard no, you with kind of information and just be... I'm <laughs> your, not head, your head will explode. I mean, obviously yeah. with you having an experience about kind of, you know, planes and things like that, you would understand a bit more of it, but if you're, no. new, if you're new to all of this, then yeah, it can be no, a bit, of course, a bit of daunting. So, first things first, I'm going to talk about the underside of planes. So, or planes or like shoulder planes, which I did talk about a minute ago. So these are the th like the most common planes you're going to kind of come across. The ones you kind of initially need are kind of a jack plane, something like this. This is a, was a record, but it could be a Stanley, it doesn't really matter. Five and a half um, and a block plane. They are kind of go-to kind of first planes you're going to kind of have. More specialist planes, but low angle, low angle planes and then your shoulder planes and things. You don't necessarily need them when you first start out, but they are quite important kind of later on. Um, when I did my apprenticeship, I started off with, you know, this plane first. That's what I kind of used the most. Um, and I didn't have this block plane. I had a, just a Stanley kind of block plane you know, back in the day. Um, and then when I kind of, you know, obviously through my career, you have used different planes. And then I came across the, the, the Lee Nielsen that was the, the slightly kind of longer version of this, more of a jack plane as well, rather than the kind of smoothing plane. Um, and I prefer that over kind of this one, essentially. So I kind of quite like, you know, I quite like this one. And then I use the kind of low angle plane. I mean, I'm just kind of discussing this so we can kind of understand, because you go, why if, if it's these two are the most important ones, why have I got a low angle plane? So, and the reason for that is that this one, this is a standard, standard angle kind of here, standard kind of blade-ish, but let's not, we're not talking about that just yet, but it, this one here, when, you're, when we get into planing wood and things like that, that this guy potentially tears out wood more than a low angle plane. And if you don't understand the kind of tearing out bit, again, we'll get into that when we get into kind of planing. So, when in, in a kind of, you know, I'm from a very, not say kind of commercial background, but I'm in a background of where professional woodworkers, you don't want to tear out your timber. You can't afford for it to tear out and be really rough because you can be very close to your dimension. And your boss will be like, what the hell, are you, what the hell are you doing that for? You're, you know, you're just wasting your time or you've gone under the dimension. So, you don't want it, you go, okay, well, I'm not hand planing big bits of timber anymore. I'm just doing an edge or like a small amount of work. So that's when you kind of, you don't get rid of this one, but you don't use that very much. And then you use the low angle because it doesn't kind of tear out as much. So then it's kind of, these two are my kind of preferred, you know, preferred kind of planes anyway, just because I know you guys have got, did you get the low angle plane? I have one. Yeah, so that's why, and then Mark, we went through this kind of stage of, this was all on the, the tool list, and then I was like, yeah, but for students, because this one tears out, this one very rarely tears out, and when, we, when you're beginning, yeah, it's a finer kind of cut. We'll, we'll go through, like I said, the anatomy, we'll go through the ins and outs of both of them, and we get into hand planing, but it was just about, about the, the circle, how I've come to using these more, because in a commercial kind of environment, where you want to hopefully make some money making furniture, you're not hand planing things for days on end. You're using machines downstairs or power machines, a yeah. planer thicknesser, and you're planing it close to dimension, you're not spending three or four days, which I wasn't, as an apprentice, I spent a whole year just using hand tools. So I wasn't able to use any machines whatsoever. So a couple of millimeters coming off the top of something, I had to plane the whole thing. 
blisters and mountains of shavings on my bench, but that was just the traditional thing to do. Of course, that's not wise to do that if you want to make some money, so it was kind of resorting to these. But I know I'm kind of going waffling a bit about you know tools, but that's the kind of full circle of how I've got to these. And then, like I discussed with you guys a minute ago, it's flattening. You're flattening these blades and flattening chisels, because if they're not flat, then you're not going to kind of get any decent work out of it anyway. So, is there an issue of planing flat going straight to a smoother size? You know, that going to a shorter size? Um, you'd have kind of issues with with like not having a kind of longer length. The longer, is that what you mean? About yeah. That? Yeah. So you potentially have when you're planing longer things, you could kind of hollow them out. Yeah. But you should be very aware of that anyway, because you should be using your straight edge and things like that starting to start with. So you shouldn't just kind of plainly, of course, if it was a long bit of timber, then you could hollow it out a tiny bit. Yeah. But you should be very aware of A, that it probably should have gone over the machine already. Yeah. And if it's all twisted and it's kind of wonky, well, it's probably not the correct bit of timber you used in the first place. So it's not that because it's short, it's going to ruin stuff. You've got to be aware of how many shavings are taking off and you've got a straight edge and it tells you what's going on it's kind of i always say that whenever you're you know whenever i'm planing something i'll have a tiny small pile of shavings to make it perfectly flat because i'll have a very expensive straight edge and other tools that i'll use just as much as this so you can't just kind of hack away and hope that it's going to be flat also you don't want to be stuck in this one spot and you want to go all the whole thing yeah. so we make one consistent cut another consistent cut another consistent cut so it stays yeah, yeah. Yes, and it will tell you if there's kind of if if it was longer, if you kept going in the middle, it will kind of stop because it's if it's, yeah, it's, it's like an, this is like a straight edge underneath here, so it will kind of tell you. But it's not it's not a drawback necessarily. And and there's other reasons why this is better than the kind of jack plane because of the mechanics of this. But we'll go into. That. So it's very much a machine and smoother combo rather. Than, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. Now we'll go through, let's just back the blade off this one, and I've already kind of done this one. So, for flattening things, what do you need to start with? Well, you need to have either, this is float glass, so if you are ever ordering glass in the future for this, don't order toughened glass, because you might think toughened glass is better, because it is tough and it doesn't shatter. But the problem with toughened glass, it goes through an oven, and it's not flat. It's obviously a lot harder and it doesn't because this will just crack and it can be quite dangerous if you break just and this is normal float glass float glass it's not guaranteed that it's flat over a huge surface but on a surface this size this is i think it's like nine ten millimeters thick something like that it's quite cheap so why wouldn't you get that and the main reason toughened glass is not flat it's not sold as something that's flat it's just toughened so that's, they're the kind of differences so you could buy something like this to flatten the underneath of there, or because we're a school, you buy this granite block. But the granite block, it's not for everyone, it weighs 80 kilos. So, but we have lots of these. This is what you guys will be using. I think they're around 100 and something pounds. So they're not like 300, they're not a crazy amount of money, but they're crazy weight. The weight is the same, obviously 80 kilos is a lot of weight. So you're not gonna be carrying that around by yourself. That's why we've got trolleys, but there's three of these, there's three of you, so you can have one each. So not everyone's gonna have something like this in their workshop, but they might have a planer bed or something like that, a table saw or something else that is flat. But if you don't, get some thick float glass that's longer than your plane, you know what I mean? And stick it, I've just used double-sided tape and I've stuck this to a bit of MDF. It could be stuck to, I wouldn't stick it to plywood, because plywood can twist very slightly. So MDF is the best thing, and obviously checking this flat might have you, but I'm not, big lesson on that but stick it to something flat essentially with the granite block you can see that it's already got sandpaper on there and ready so if you guys are doing this in the future like in a, in a day or so whenever you need to replace this and I'll go through like how to stick it on there because this is not sticky back sandpaper this is just normal kind of sandpaper peel that off but then what you'll be left with is the adhesive that's been left by this kind of spray mount stuff and you need to clean that off. Just grab the, the, all the flammable stuff. There's a yellow cabinet around the corner. You see a big flammable cabinet. It's not locked. It's just the door has to be closed afterwards. So spray some white spirit on there and then just use a rag. Sometimes I'm gonna use these paint scrapers. 
It's got these standing blades in there. They're really cheap and very good at kind of scraping up some of the kind of the gunk on there. Because these are designed for cleaning glass, like paint and stuff off the glass. It just gets any of the adhesive up. Because clearly, you don't want anything on this. The same applies for that as well, when I remove one of those as well. You can't have any grit or dust or grime underneath this. It will create a bump onto this and that's not going to be any good for your tools when you're flattening it kind of later on. And white spirit's the best stuff to use. You could use acetone, but acetone kind of it evaporates like really, really quickly. Yeah. Whereas this is kind of oily, so it just kind of stays there for a while and dissolves, dissolves the solvent. Uh, like you can, like stuff like this, you know, you could put gloves on, but if you're kind of quite careful, it's not like it's it burn your kind of skin or anything like that. It's just not good for like prolonged exposure, I guess. That. What I'll do is I'll do the same to one of these as well. So same principle, but these these bits of paper, any of the sharpening film, this is sticky back. So this has got the adhesive stuck on it. It's got a film on there, which you'll see me kind of take off in a minute. Let's pick all this one off. Just while I've got the white spirit left, I can kind of... So you can see you've got your stick. So you need to, because yours have already got sharpening film on it. I didn't clean all those off, because they could be okay. You know what I mean? They still could have some life left in them. So it's a bit of a waste, because these, like I said, they're it's four pounds for an A4 sheet. Well, this is it cut into four. So these are a pound each, you know what I mean? So there's no point just kind of ripping them off of them. Yeah. They've still got some life left in them. So the idea with these, this one's easy. You just kind of peel that off and then clean it. Whereas these ones, with the kind of writing on them, the, the adhesive is a lot more sticky. Yeah. So you have to kind of struggle a little more to take it off. Yeah, and the idea is to kind of peel it off. Don't peel it as fast as possible. So you peel it off quite slowly. And depending how long it's been on there, if it's only been on there like for a few months, then it's not so bad. If it's been on there for like six months or a year, then it decides it. It's not like that hard to pull off, but you don't just rip it off. So just a little bit more stuff there. Yeah. I don't know what it is, like this one here without the writing that you can see, that just peels off really easy. It's just different adhesive that they've stuck it with. But you'll see that it's kind of that there's a fair amount kind of stuck on there and you will not you won't be able to just scrape it off with that that's why you need a solvent to kind of get rid of it i'll just do one because that's what i need to do to show you guys really and i'll come come around and dry that in a minute this one you almost like build it into a kind of like you need it to be a little bit wet for it to do its work for it to kind of just start dissolving the thing And you have got, I think I've given you guys like three, but again, I'll go through this. This is like 30 microns. They use microns instead of grit, essentially. Um, but it's the coarsest. It goes like the opposite way. Yeah. Like it's, it's like the, the more microns is the coarser. Yeah. But you can I'm feel used, it. I'm used to like uh, 100 grit and 150 grit. Exactly, yeah. The, this stuff is still exactly the same. You know, this is 180 grit, and obviously yeah. the higher the number of finer it gets, it's kind of microns is the other way. Yeah. But you'll get, you know, you'll get used to it. It's not like we use like loads. There's like four or five, and it's like that's nine, and you can tell that it's kind of it's, it's a lot finer. But again, like I said, we'll go through that. So you guys don't really use like water stones. Um, for schools, it's so much easier using this system. I think for people starting out, um, I've used water stones and loads in the past and oil stones. Um, it's like I said, it's the discipline. People aren't that, students aren't that disciplined and, and like, and beginners and people are just like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna kind of hack away. And then you'll end up with this not being flat and you pretty much ruin the chisel or the plain blade because trying to come back from it. Exactly, you may as well just buy a new blade because it'll, it'll take you so long to get it flat. Whereas the underneath of planes, people just might not realize if they're not, you know, if they're not flat, they're, they've just been really bad at planing stuff. And it's like, oh, it's, it's just your tools, your tools weren't kind of flat in the first place. It's just one of those things you just gotta, gotta check it. 
Do you find you get sharper results with the um, um, film? I've got a mixed, yeah. mixed bag, but I'll definitely dissect that more in the other, you know, when we have the next, not the next lesson, but it will be tomorrow um, on sharpening. I've got a few theories. I heard you mention the lapping. So you do you use the leather yes. and like lapping film and stuff? Wax. Yeah, yeah. Put a wax on. I've only just recently got some to kind of test that out. But like I said, we'll, we can talk. I'd like to know your kind of experience as well, you know, mm. your yeah. learnings from that. Yeah. I'm sure it's not proper my learning. I don't think it's like proper how I do it, but it works. It works, yeah, yeah. No, yeah that's, that's all part of it. If you can get a, you can get a sharp blade, yeah, when you're lapping, it's not really to like to sand it to make it sharp, it's to keep it sharp. Yeah. It's to keep it sharp, that's what you know? Yeah, yeah. It's not really like the really tough grits. When it's a really tough grits because like, I dropped my chisel or something, they got really damaged by Do you use, um, oh, you said you will use water stones. Yeah, things. I use uh, Japanese water stones. Yeah, yeah. Because other water stones, I'll spray them with water, but they just absorb the water. Instantly. They've got to be fairly, I've found they have to be fairly decent. Yeah, so um, yeah. my father bought these Japanese ones, and I spray like twice, and the water just stays out. Yeah, it doesn't get sun. No, he does a little bit, but like you need to have much. good quality ones. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's, he likes the high quality things, you know. We're, we're reaching for that high quality in our work, so we have high quality yeah. machines as well. Japan Woodwork, and that's a nice, yeah, it's a nice capital metal or a nice mm -hmm. store, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've got a few miles in the States, so I got a few things from there. Nice, a few chisels and things. Yeah, my chisel is the Japanese set. Yeah, yeah. Japanese set of chisels. Yeah, no, I do like the Japanese as well. Yeah, no, I do like the Japanese chisels. Right, so make sure it's nice and clean. You rub your hand once the kind of um, you've got rid of the white spirit. You can use your hands. Your hands are quite good at kind of picking up. Like if there's any kind of you know like grit or any of the kind of adhesive kind of left on there. Right. Then for this this one's like they have two different methods essentially. Like I said, this one's plastic from the underneath. You need to kind of get your Get your thumbnail, fingernail, whatever it is, kind of pinch a corner, twist a corner over, and use your nail to kind of pick up the plastic. And then a thin, don't peel it all the way off, but at least you kind of got some of it off. Yeah, so kind of peel that bit off. Then this is what you're gonna use, a kind of, it's like a print roller, you know what I mean, thing. I wouldn't, you wouldn't really, say I wouldn't do it without it, not really, you need to have one of these because you need to roll it quite hard to get all the bubbles out essentially, that's what you're trying to prevent, you don't want bubbles. I'll go through how to fix it if you do have bubbles, um, try not have them in the first place. So peel back some of it, you can like stick it like that, you can stick it kind of that way, it doesn't really matter. So aim it kind of in that general kind of direction, yeah stick down that. Then when you use the roller, use the corner of the roller. You're not rolling it like this, because you push it down hard, it's probably not, it's gonna bend very slightly. So you want to use the corner of the roller, like so. Yeah, and then you're lifting it up, so all the bubbles are clearly just gonna travel out. You're not just peeling the whole thing, on, just slapping it on there, yeah. And you'll come back, but that's how it's kind of done. And then just keep pulling it. There, but we'll just go all the way along. And the same principle if you're trying to do on the, with the system that I use, I have instead of having you know a bit of glass we have the different grits on it, I have got bits of glass that are just over A4 in size. So I stick down the whole thing. It's a bit harder to stick down the whole thing, but I prefer having a larger bit. Yeah. For students, it's, it's just more compact to have it like this, and we have weekend courses and stuff. You no, just have it like this, so you've just got a small amount of it. And it's cheaper as well, you're not having multiple bits of glass and kind of all the rest of it. So that's how to stick it down. And then you can just have a look, you know, first off, what happens if I have a bubble in here? What you do, you either have this, because it's just kind of convenient, cut a little slot in it, yeah? Cut a slot and then kind of roll it out. The blades and anything won't really care if there's a little slot in it, it doesn't matter. You know, if you had a foam cover or a foam case or something like that, clearly you don't want to cut bubbles out like that because you've ruined it. You're not ruining this, but you can't have bubbles like a big molehill bumping out because it won't make your blades very flat. If you have like adhesive left underneath it, 
which is slightly harder. Let's say you feel it and you go, oh, you start sharpening, you see this big black lump here where there's a bit of something underneath this. You cannot peel this back up to get rid of it. But what you can do is you can kind of cut like a triangle or a square and remove that bit of material. So just get rid of that space. But then it will just be a hole. It won't be a bump. So you just get rid of it essentially. Yeah, so they're the two methods of yeah. the, the, the part. Don't, the, 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 the name of the game, A, don't peel anything back. Once you stuck it there, it's stuck. Cut to get the air bubble out, or sorry, just slice it, roll it out, and then cut a little kind of hole or triangle or what have you. There, this, two, two this is like some prime or something. Exactly, like exactly, where the, all you peeled it and something kind of just got under there. They're the two kind of methods. This one here, so, and this is not like, let's say there's not that much mess necessarily kind of with this one. This guy here, it's spray mount. It is quite expensive, but it does last kind of like about six pounds a can, something like that. You don't want, it's kind of contact, it's not contact adhesive, it's, it's a spray mount. Contact adhesive and spray mount, they're two kind of different things. Contact adhesive is where you, instead of spray, you'll spray it on one side, spray it on here, and then spray it on there, and then you kind of stick it to itself. Whereas spray mount is very fine, it's a very fine spray, because you want it to be fine. You don't want this thick, lumpy spray to be stuck on the other side underneath the here, because is it gonna be flat? No, is the answer, it won't be very flat. So you need to spray this, um, you know, we have got the window open a tiny bit, well ventilated area kind of, but the workshop's massive, you're not yeah. spraying a huge amount of it, so it's not the end of the world. But what I do insist you guys do, which is on the floor, I'll kind of hide that underneath here, but under the assembly benches, there's other bits of MDF on the floor. Because if you just stick this on the floor and you spray that, in a few days time there's going to be like a shadow of you spraying on the floor. We had that in the last workshop. The floor was just riddled with those, you know, marks with people like, oh, please don't be it. So please use like the bits of MDF, exactly. Just like this. So, so I'll don't show spray you. it on the workbench and the MDF on the workbench. No, exactly. No, just the, 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 there's loads of these kind of underneath the, underneath the assembly benches okay. and just, just whack at the floor like this. So the overspray is going onto that essentially. Now you are showing two methods, we, we don't have to, to do both. You do both, yeah, but I'll go through them in a second. Yeah, this is going to be for the plane, the other one is going to be for chisels. That one is for... Uh, okay. Yeah, this is going to be for flat planes. Okay. So now you spray the, you know, spray this on here, like it does it here, like it dries pretty quick, as in like it doesn't, you don't have to wait for a huge amount of time. You still have to have a roller. A roller. This one doesn't have as many problems as the adhesive on that, with bubbles and so on. You still want to have this completely clean. You know, you can have a tiny bit of dust on there, but you don't want like lumps of things on there. So we only use the glass for... Uh, for, sharp, for sharpening and flattening plain blades and chisels. Both, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I, all right, I'll go through it. Right, so this you can just kind of lay down like that and then just roll it as normal. You don't get air, but you know, it doesn't really yeah. get air bubbles in this one. What you have got to be careful is like the edges, you know, the edges rolled up or anything like that. It's not the end of the world, but it's just best practice. So that's nice and flat. Yeah. So that's the kind of, that's the method how to attach that one. And that's quite a simple one, but then it's just remembering not to spray on the floor, essentially. Then, now, let's go through. And I'm not going to spend ages flattening these, I'm going to just explain the kind of, you know, what to look out for. So let's grab my block plane. Do First, you the, um, sorry, do you use the granite block for anything other than flattening planes? Uh, like, should we have it close by? For um, yeah, they do, they get used a lot. For when you're doing like hand planing stuff, you, you kind of check them on there. Check for yeah, right. you're checking, it's not, you can use a straight edge to check that it's straight. This guy will check whether things are twisted. Yeah. Again, we'll go through mm -hmm. that. But you've got to think that lots of students kind of jump and like if you're standing the underneath of a box or having the lid on the top of a box fitting, well, it's perfect to put some sandpaper on there and sand it around like that because it's a huge sanding yeah. block that's perfectly flat. So there's many uses for it. But sometimes when you're planing stuff and it's a bit twisted, 
you can't always resort to this. You've got to use winding sticks and other scenarios to make sure it's kind of flat. So yeah, because you can have things that don't fit on that. Like, I've always relied on a granite block, but we'll go through it and we're going to do hand plane essentially. So now we need to come to the same. We've let's get rid of this one because we're not doing the shoulder plane. I'm going to flatten the underneath of this, that, and let's say I did have kind of that one. What do you need to do? Like I could have left the blade in this one if I wanted to, but I'll, I would back off the blade. Of course, you don't want to erode your blade. You know what I mean? You don't want that to kind of sticking out. Same goes for your block plane. But what I'd suggest with your block plane, and again, don't worry. It's not like I'm going to leave you to your own devices out there. I'm going to kind of disappear, so you can still, of course, ask me kind of questions about it. That when your blade's kind of set up in here, that this one here. Undo that. The mouth kind of the mouth is this part kind of here. You can see kind of closing up there. You do kind of need your mouth kind of set in, in roughly where you want it to be when you're kind of flattening the underside of this one. The same goes for this one as well. I mean, I'll go through that in more detail kind of later on because I don't want to kind of go too long into the video about how long, how that's kind of done. But essentially, what you can do is kind of adjust your blade. And how you'll see how much the blade is sticking out. Just get a bit of paper, get a bit of paper on your bench, have a look at the blade like this, and then move the blade forward so you can see where the blade comes out essentially. You'll see like a black line. And don't worry, like I said, if you are confused, I'll come and see you kind of later on. What you do is you'll move this and then see where the blade is just coming out, and then you'll have a look at the opening kind of here. Can you see that's really big and open? I think I don't think it can move over anymore. Yeah, it can. Well, you'd never use your plane in this scenario where it's got this huge opening here. And again, I'll go through the kind of mechanics and stuff of why it would be open, why it wouldn't be. But generally speaking, you want that pretty darn close, something like that, that it's kind of half a millimeter or something. So you want to get it into that position first before you start flattening it. If it's, if it's a well-engineered thing, then it shouldn't matter, but sometimes it does. Yeah, but just for this one. This one doesn't have an adjustable mouth, so it doesn't matter, yeah. So, I've adjusted that one, now I've backed the blade off, and let's say I've done exactly the same with that one, I'm gonna back the blade off. So of that, yeah. Then, and like I said, you don't have to do this, I'm doing it so you can see all of the scenarios, yeah. You'll take your blade out, you get your chisels, and your mark, this is where your magic marker, Sharpie, comes into its own. You're going to put Sharpie at the very tip. I'm not going to show you this one as well, because this one's not flat. I got this recently. I need it. I know it's not flat, but it's quite going to be a good example of why I'm putting a Sharpie on the end. This one, I won't do all of these, but... Yeah. Block plane, I'll just see. Yeah, you really want the most important areas that you need to be flat are around here. That bit needs to be extremely flat and kind of around here. It could be like a tiny bit missing from kind of here or one of these bits, like there mainly. But I'm going to kind of mark it up anyway to kind of see what it looks like. I don't need to mark this one up. You can see what's kind of on, what's happening to this one. It's, it's not touching kind of here. There's a bit around the mouth, but I'll mark it anyway because I'll just have a, I'll do it for a couple of seconds. I'm not going to spend hours flattening them. You'll see. And this one I've done kind of recently, but a similar kind of size as that one. Okay, let's go on to this guy. So I would like certainly you need to have like the blade in here. Why do you need to have the blade and all this in there? Because if you disassemble all of this it's going to be a real pain for you to hold on to, yeah, because you're going to take the handle out essentially. So the blade needs to be in there and this needs to be reasonably tight. I wouldn't go crazy, but again, we'll go through this kind of later on when we go to set up. Reasonably tight so it's not kind of coming apart, yeah, because you're going to hold this like that to kind of do it. This one here, well, that one is kind of irrelevant whether the blade's in here or not. It's just, it's got a handle, but the, and the handle is not attached to any of this mechanism anyway, so it's not really going to affect anything. The same with this guy here, this is called a frog kind of assembly. It's not affecting anything by taking it apart, so, but it's just they've got handles on them already, so nice and easy. So, do's, do's and don'ts on 
sandpaper. A, I've got, I think it was a 180 grit, 180 grit on here. I wouldn't go any coarser than that to start with. I wouldn't go to kind of, we've got uh, like the red stuff that I've kind of peeled off is over there. This is a red, I can't remember the name of the, Gary Flex or something, what's it called, I don't know. Um, this is the 150 grit, so it's coarser. It's coarser than that. Don't just bang on the coarsest one you can, because you could do more harm than good. Yeah, so first off, I've marked this. This is fresh sandpaper here. No one's used it before, so I know it's got, I always like to describe this as like, um, like grass. Grit that's stuck onto this, it's a similar level. Yeah, all of this, because it's not being used, is, is the same kind of level on here. If I just keep using it, and I keep going in the middle, and I don't kind of move over, I'll wear down the middle bit, and then it's got coarser stuff. It'll be like, it'll go down and then up like this, because I've only kind of worn the middle out. And every time I go a little bit here, or a little bit there, you're eating away more at the side. So just bear that in mind and try and remember that because this is quite a small thing. If you just stick to the middle and go a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there, what you should be doing um, is trying to wear down the paper evenly. So this is what will catch people out by using sandpaper like this. That stuff still does something very similar, but that's why you don't go for like super coarse kind of sandpaper to kind of start with. You've got to be a bit careful because you don't want to make this out of flat. And this should be a quick-ish operation shouldn't be taking kind of hours. Which grip did you start with? 180? This is 180, okay. yeah. So let's make sure I've backed that and backed it right off. So, and I'm not pushing much pressure, just a small amount of pressure. And I'm gonna kind of move all the way across. Yeah, so I'm using all of the paper. Yeah, that's about, about enough. Yeah, and then have a look like straight away. That wasn't that, wasn't that much pressure. And I was moving, you know, across the kind of whole thing. And you can see there's like like a tiny bit it has actually kind of because the um sharpie kind of like goes into the into the grain let's call it you know what i mean it kind of sinks in like a little bit i know that's kind of all right it's kind of faded here it's kind of faded there there's a little bit missing on the corner i'll be happy with that you know what i mean it's kind of you're not looking to get rid of all of it you don't want to go oh i'm going to spend another 20 minutes to get rid of all of that if, if it's kind of faded, it means it's flat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the so old. That, that one is flat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see in a minute when I do that one. You'll see what's not, what's not flat. Yeah. And you it could say, a hmm? very clear yeah. Like that, like oh yeah, you'll see it. I mean, what you could do is, um, you know, if this is clean over here, which it's not, you could put your plane down here, and you could get a feeler gauge. And you might not know what that is, but we can go through that later on. But you could try and fit a feeler gauge under there. But I know it's not. I know it's flat because it's got rid of all of it like straight away and I was very careful at doing this yeah when it moves on to this guy here yeah let me just sharpie all of this so you can see what's not flat this is an ongoing kind of thing for me because it's this will probably take in its current condition probably take about three hours to flatten this, maybe four hours, pretty a long time doing it by hand, and many, many bits of sandpaper kind of replaced, because it doesn't last that long. You think, oh wow, that's biting into it really well. And it only lasts like that for five, 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 ten minutes yeah. and it's worn down. I've been doing it by hand, normally. Yeah. This, this one here, I, I gave to an engineering company, a local engineering company, because I knew it wasn't flat, and I said, look, can you stick that in your, it's a surface grinder. So it's kind of not like this, but it's a, a wheel like this that's up on the top and it stays still. And this kind of passes by it essentially like an engineering machine, it's called a surface grinder. And he said it was really hard holding on to this in the machine because a surface grinder relies on a magnetic force to like hold bits of metal down to it. He said it wouldn't work because this is flat. It's not flat underneath here. He said he really found it hard to clamp hold of this and get it into position. And then when I got it back, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a lesson and I'm gonna see how flat this is. It wasn't bloody flat. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> he did it for yeah. free, because I've worked with him before. So I wasn't gonna go, hey, can you give it a, he said it was really hard putting on their machine. So uh, I don't think, so sometimes just doing this and even if it takes so three hours. do it by hand? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it with the machine. There are machines that are sharpened. 
but like through videos I've seen, they always say that by hand is the best. Yeah, way. It, by hand is the way. Yeah, you that's how you get it super fine, super but yeah. sharp. Why? Uh, how are they not? Why is that? Not this is really old playing. Okay, so when you use it, it's uh, it, it's more complicated than that because it's because this is cast like it's cast steel most of these so that all of these will be cast steel they have kind of tension in them almost like they're not like an inert thing like they do move over time you know so this kind of moves it has like stresses and things in it it depends how you sit it in your toolbox you sit it in your toolbox like resting like this for like 10 years then it probably won't be flat anymore because you you weren't resting it like super flat so there can be outside influences but they're only really very small like influences but influences all the same so they can go out to flat it's not like i've used this and worn away here and worn away there it's just the metal moving very slightly and just yeah mainly because it's cast but lots of other kind of planes can can have that so now i'll sharpie this same thing and when you're doing this you're just going to kind of like you would do, don't push like loads of pressure kind of down because you'll wear the grit out a bit. You're just doing a few passes and going over the sandpaper here, over there and over the ends. Yeah, so you're just going from one end. You're not just sticking to like this. Yeah, you must remember to kind of do all of it. Move it around. Yeah, this is why it takes like so, you know, so long. You have to do that for like three hours to get it flat. For this for one, one, not for yours. Yeah? Can you see now? Not see there? See how yeah. bad that is terrible around there. It's not even touched, it's not gone anywhere near the sharpie so you there. Can't use that before it's, flat. it's close. I could leave this alone. So I need to do a bit more, because I have done this every now and again. I've kind of just done a you know 20 minutes, half an hour or something. Mm -hmm. Just I'm slowly getting there. But I don't use this plane anymore, so I'm not that fussed. I use that guy and I know it's nice and flat because I do check that every now and again. So sometimes maybe once a year you could just put Sharpie on there and just go shh, brilliant, it's nice and flat. Or it's not performing correctly when you're hand playing and you're like, ah, why is that not? Then go and check it. It literally takes minutes, like as quick as I did that one, you could be done. And you should be done, you know what I mean? For most new planes, it should be that quick. Yeah. This is an old, old plane and it's not flat but it needs that kind of yeah time spent but i just don't have three hours and i'll get really bored kind of you, wouldn't, you wouldn't go down to a course of grip so you've got to be careful going to a course of grip the, the reason for that is that once you go to the kind of 150 like 180 or no sorry 80 grip sorry the 150 or the 80 grip the grass as i call it is a hell of a lot higher yeah and and because if you're not disciplined enough then what happens is you, you do it in the middle, you do it in the middle, you do it in the middle, this guy ends up like a boat and you're down a really slippery slope if you do that. Because if this is like domed over, which I have seen students before, this, like I said, it should be a kind of 10 minute, 20 minute, maybe half an hour exercise. If you're doing it for two hours, you've done something wrong. And then what happens then if this is kind of domed over, like, and it would go, wow, I'm getting rid of my Sharpie, that's because you're rocking it like this. Yeah, when you're doing this, you're just keeping it nice, kind of planted, yeah? And if you did it a few, like five or six kind of passes and turned it over, and if it was kind of Sharpie left here and Sharpie left there, I've, I've never seen that in a brand new plane before. So only if it's a really old plane, if someone else spent hours and you bought it and someone hacked away in some sandpaper, it's really hard getting a plane back to flat again if it's got a dome, a reason that like we've had students have done that before, and how I told them to do to fix it is to before you stick this down, get a pin, stick it down, and have a piece of masking tape underneath this. Yeah, so the piece of masking tape that's underneath it does the opposite. It bumps up here, and it sounds more in the middle. So you end up with a kind of flat spot down, and then a flat spot here, and then you do quite a few passes like that and then go back to flat sandpaper. So you almost want like a ridge here and a ridge there. That's to prevent the kind of rocking. But you could be a, a day or two of sanding, you know what I mean? But it's just it's what it is. But that's only people that have like bought their own planes in and they've been an absolute disaster. We've never had that with anyone with brand new planes. They should never ever be that far I off. I think uh, my shoulder plane, because that's like, we have that, that's, I use that on my shot. My shoulder plane I think is pretty beat up. I don't yeah. think it's flat. 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the cup. Could be. Just by looking at it, I could tell. And the, how you can tell whether, like, if right. this plane is, let's say you were kind of like you either bought bought an old plane, we're using an old plane, you don't have a granite block. How you can tell whether this is domed over like that is that when you start getting a shaving out of it, you get shaving out of here, then you get a shaving out of there when you start planing some wood. And your blade is dead flat because you sharpened it on this. It's because this isn't flat. And because that's the hot, it's like this, it's bumped over, your blade will come out there and it'll come out there. And then I instantly, I'll be able to do a shaving, I'll be like, yeah, I bet you a hundred pounds that this isn't flat. It's nothing to do with your blade because we just sharpened it, it's that this isn't flat. But again, don't worry, this is for worst case scenario, but you don't have that because you've got a brand new plane, you know, you've got a brand new plane. I'm just saying about the, the checks you have to go through here. Yeah? So it should be a quick operate, you know, it should be a quick operation. It should be like a few, you know, five or six kind of passes, maybe 10, have a look at it. And then if it doesn't look good, just give me a shout. Just be like, yeah, what do you think? I'm like, okay, maybe a tiny bit more, not two hours on it and you've turned it into a bit of a dome when it was all right in the first place. But it's something you need to check, like I said. Yeah, so that one and that one, exactly the same. Yeah, same principle. And if you do have a large one of these, still the same principle. Yeah, and we do that on this, not yeah. on the... But there's yeah. two, yeah, yeah, on the granite block, yeah, not on here. None of the plain bottoms or soles you're going to do on this. This is purely for plain blades. So the granite which is block soul. is only for... Only for bottom of planes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to chisels... So, we're not going to talk about the bevel, this is not going to be sharpening, yeah, this is just going to be making the back kind of flat. Same, same deal, like with chisels and with a plain blade, if the back or underside is not flat, you're not going to produce a very sharp edge, yeah, because there's something called a burr, when you're sharpening you create a burr, and if you can't get that burr off the back of it, then you're not going to create a very, not a very sharp edge at all. So it's, again, it's fundamentals. This needs to be flat, this needs to be flat. And if it's not flat, you're not gonna knock the burr off efficiently. So again, you're just gonna, you'll, you'll struggle with getting anything kind of sharp. Same thing, put a Sharpie on the back of it, so you know whether it's flat or not. If it's like this one, it, like I'm not that fussed about this blade, I don't use it that much. But flattening something, you really should only do once. You know what I mean? It's not something, once you've flattened like this, yes, you may have to revisit it after a few years or what have you, but when you're flattening the back of your blade, when you're gone to, you should go to something quite coarse, like the 30 microns, something like that. But once, once it is flat, you don't really need to go back and re-flatten it on the 30 microns. You need to just take the burr off on one of the kind of smaller or lesser grits. You know, but again, we'll go into this once we get into kind of sharpening and so stuff. So when you have a new blade, you always... Uh, you always have to check it whether it's flat. Okay. Yeah, same as the, you know what I mean? Same as the, same, same thing. So, Sharpie on here. Do's and don'ts. Don'ts is, don't put it like this, really close to the edge and start hacking away there because you'll have a tendency of lifting this up and that is a really bad idea. So don't do it like this. Go in as like as far as you can and that means you're kind of balancing. I'll show you in a minute but I was just holding it up so you can kind of get the idea. Don't do it like this either where you're just pulling this thing backwards. It will take you forever doing that. And then also you'd have the tendency of pulling it back and lifting it up because your hands get in it and then you're going to roll over the end of your, oh, I've got rid of the Sharpie, that was quick. That's because you rolled it up and you made it kind of flat on the other side. So, lay this down nice and flat. Like this is where my, the A4, like the larger size, kind of works a bit better. But you guys can kind of, like you can go over to like kind of here, especially with smaller chisels, but certainly don't go over that far. So you will only use kind of that part of it. Same thing applies, don't just do here, you need to use all of the, all of the paper. So, this one you want to put just lots of pressure, lots of pressure kind of down here. And I probably don't. Pressure, right? hmm? Equal, Equal pressure. yeah. You want to try and spread out as much of your hands as possible rather than kind of just pushing here or pushing on the outside. So you want to try and push, you know, this down. This is a really thin blade, like really thin. Most blades that are in modern versions of this and this, they're thick. 
they're like twice, if not more, the thickness of this. So I can influence this quite a lot more than you would a real thick blade. You probably wouldn't be able to. So, let's do a couple of passes. Again, sometimes go over the sandpaper, kind of here, instead of doing right there, because again, you want to wear down the paper evenly. You don't want to leave this, this like lip up at the side. How do you switch the, the blade? The switch the the, the grip? No, uh, the blade for. No, no, this blade only it only gets used in this one. Is used in. Only used in this blade. Yeah. Uh, sorry, in this plane. Sorry. Okay. The I was just using it as an example. See how thin it is. Yeah. None of your blades will be this thin. Okay. So because it's thin, if you push like really hard in the middle you can kind of flex it a tiny bit. Whereas your blades are thicker, you won't be able to do that as much. That's what I was saying really. So now if you look at it, that it, all of the sharpies disappear, you know, disappeared, like the sharpies gone off. Actually there's a teeny bit kind of there I can see. It's not quite got rid of that, but I'm not gonna spend 20 minutes here flattening the thing. So it has got a little bit, I think my sharpie's hiding a bit here, down here. So it's a tiny bit off, yeah. Then you go on the 30, this is the 30, 30 microns, sharpie it again, your job is not done, you know what I mean, if it's, if it's okay kind of here, you then got to move on to the finer, yeah, your finer grip, 30, sorry, the 15, getting that wrong, turn this around, this will be a bit of a, any metal work is going to be messy, I'm afraid, it just is what it is, just go and wash your, wash your hands every now and again, um, it's just going to be yeah, darker metal. Right, then do the same thing. Keep it right over here. Pushing a decent amount of pressure down. Yeah, and then whenever you lift it up, let it drop. And pick it up like that. Don't pick it up and scrape it over the top. Like, this is such a precious edge right here. Look after it. If you have bad discipline, where you're kind of just scrubbing around, lifting this up like that. You know, oh, it's a little bit off. Yeah, I can take you two hours to fix that. If you've got bad discipline, where you're kind of, oh, I'm doing this, and then scrape that off, because you're just used to doing stuff like that, then you'll, you'll pay for it eventually, because you've got to fix the, you have to fix the thing. Now I look at it, it has improved, that kind of bit there. It's starting to get a bit shinier as well. Like, what you'll find, because this is an old blade, kind of, and I've already flattened it loads. With newer blades, you'll find that there are grinder marks, surface grinder marks on here where there's these tiny little lines. They're tiny lines, but you'll see them kind of going up like that, depending on which way it's kind of being machined. You want to try and get rid of those lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, and it doesn't have to be like shiny like a mirror, like you can see a reflection, because that could take forever to do that. It take a few days to get, you're not after a kind of mirror of being nice, but it doesn't have to be like a mirror finish. You just have to get rid of the Sharpie at the tip. That's the, you know, it's a must, you must be able to get rid of that. So, got done with that one, move on to the nine. Just, just getting rid of Sharpie at the tip, so yeah. we're looking to get rid of Sharpie no, down no, to no. where it's off. No, not at all, it's just about this kind of, you know, okay. business end kind of here. Thirty, fifteen. That's nine, and that's like three or one or something. I can't remember which one that one is. Yeah, and I won't bother doing exactly the same. But sometimes you have to spend like initial time at the thirty, because depending on how kind of how you know how much of the sharpie you know you could kind of. That's why I've given you more of the thirty grits because you could go you could go through a few of those. And once it's already flattened on there, then it doesn't take much time to get it sorted on these two but we, if you wanted to get it to a bit more of a polish this is so fine there's a bit of a leap between this one and this one that's why sometimes it's better to have like a not you can't have a large bit of glass because you can't have a third one in the middle but it's why i have a four bits of paper glass on my paper um way around sorry, glass and then on the sharpie film on that it's because i have like four bits of glass and they're double-sided so I have a bigger range of grits essentially so whereas it's a bit of a that that and that works quite well it'd be nice to have something in between these two but it's just so we have to, to use all of both of them yeah 
Yeah, Is that yeah. enough only is one of No, 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 it's too coarse. So this is really coarse, so you'll feel it. Like, that's really coarse. That scratches your blade. Yeah, because it's so coarse. Then you go coarse, medium, medium, fine, really fine. Yeah, it's just the pr again, you'll learn more about these when we go into sharpening. Because okay. that, if you just did this and sharpen your plane and that, it'd be really rough. Yeah. And you plane your wood, it would not sound very nice at all if you just use this or this or even this one. That you have to go to something a really fine for it to be really nice and Basically sharp. Basically, what you're doing is with the rough and you're cutting it. It's yeah, like you're exactly. You're, you're, you're removing cutting. more material quicker yeah. with, with this guy. So then you go finer grits, it becomes like finer scratches and finer scratches. Yeah, you're just making sense. Until it becomes so fine that it's a mirror. Yeah. We, we use the same setup for the sharpening the feathers. So yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we just yeah. Set uh, again, like I'll go into like the oil stones and water stones when I get to that bit. So, now I'll just do this one like a little bit. I won't bother kind of sharpening it, but I could have done. And this is the bit that'll be nice and shiny. Yeah, that'll do. Same for chisels, like Japanese, have you got Japanese chisels? Yeah, so Japanese chisels, they're, they're not say interesting. I, I really like them. I'm not say they're not for everyone. The reason why they're not for everyone is because they're, they're like laminated. They've got a piece of steel yeah, like inserted metals. into like that bottom part here and it's a softer steel on the top. So it's good for certain kind of woods and timbers and stuff like that. But when it comes to flattening them, like I was, I was doing this one on a diamond stone, a really coarse diamond stone, and it's gonna take me forever to flatten this one. Probably five times longer than a normal chisel. Like, but if you've got brand new chisels, you shouldn't, this isn't a brand new chisel, this is a second hand chisel. And someone probably used lots of Japanese water stones that weren't flat and they domed this over. Mm. That's why it only cost me like, I think it's like 70 pounds for the whole set, like five of them. So it's a good deal, but I'm gonna to have to pay for it because it's a second hand tool. I'm gonna to spend hours and hours flattening this. You can use like, I could use an angle grinder, which I probably will, an angle grinder to angle grinder more of a hollow in this. This is why Japanese chisels have hollows in them because they're so bloody hard that it's, yeah, flattening less material essentially. Let's just do this one. Let's go on the finer grip. Actually, cool, I've never used Japanese chisels in my first set, so I'm actually- Yeah, no, they are, they are nice. Yeah, I was looking into them a little bit, learning about them, how they have two different metals. Like yeah. Say, softer metal, harder metal. And the kind of, say, traditional thing to do is to, which I've only been brave enough to do like a couple of times, you should get like a ball pin hammer or a small hammer and, and to, to make it, once they get kind of like this where they're not flat, you should get a ball pin hammer and like hit it or like, or get another tool and kind of hit it, hit the softer steel and that bends down the harder steel underneath. But if you hit it in the wrong place, yeah, crack, you can crack the harder steel. So I'm like, Ooh. Yeah. I've done it like a little bit and I've seen videos on it and I did it like a tiny bit to this one, which I wasn't that fussed about. Um, and it was okay, but I was a bit nervous doing it to my really nice ones, yeah. like cracking the thing. So it, yeah, it's gonna take me a few hours to kind of sort this one out or, I'll, or I can just make a larger kind of, the really expensive Japanese chisels have got multiple flutes in them, you know, but these ones aren't expensive, they were okay. So, apparently on half chisels, the Ashley Owls. They're, they're yeah, yeah, they've got yeah, they've got yeah. them concave. Yeah, yeah. So what were we looking for in that flat, flat, or no, it no, it's okay. Having like yeah. that amount of being concave is kind of fine. It would only be a tr it would only be a pain when you're going into like a deep mortise hole or something if it's trying to bend down. Yours should literally be. You could skip the thirty and probably go straight to like the nine or something like that yeah. with the Ashley Isles chisels. Yeah, they do that on purpose. And actually, I've done that to done this to this like plain blade as well. Yeah, but so I, you're supposed to maintain that. Yeah, so, so when, when I bought this blade, it was bent the opposite direction. It was bent down like this, right. and I was like, oh, this is awful. And I ended up getting a blowtorch, bending it, and then heating up kind of here, which you've got to be really careful you don't get heat to the end. Yeah. So I bent it down the opposite direction, right. but then it made it was a lot easier to flatten, essentially. So, um, so yeah, the Ashley Rs have know that, and made it a hell of a lot, literally like a couple of passes, you were done. So you don't need to do much at all. You could skip kind of 30, but you could do like one or two and then look at it and be like, 
done your shaft is gone kind of straight okay. away so that's why i recommend how, it how, how far down doesn't matter it could be the tiny it could be like a millimeter or two no, 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 yeah it doesn't really matter good. so because that will then you'll produce a nice sharp edge from that so yeah. do you take uh, this one on uh, between every uh, yeah between every grip yeah yeah, yeah. So this one, because I'll show you, so that, that was just, a, I didn't bother doing on the 30 because I've already kind of flattened it, but I just went on the 9 and it got rid of the Sharpie kind of straight away, a couple of passes, that's done. This one here, I'll do a couple of passes on here, just so you guys can kind of see. Yeah, it's not, there's like quite a large amount of the tip. Yeah, there's a decent amount at the end there, and I've already had a good go. I didn't, I ran out of time. I already had a good go at this with the diamond stone. The diamond stone's going to cut the far bit. If I go through the sharpening, the diamond stone's the fastest thing you're going to find. It's going to be flat so that you're going to like, uh, remove material essentially, but they're expensive, so you don't want to kind of use them kind of too much. There are coarser ones of this, but they're not yeah, as coarse as kind of the diamond stones. Um, so, in summary, so. Trying to think of other things you're trying to watch out for. With Japanese chisels, and you've got to check with yours that, um, I haven't got a ruler, but I can use this as a ruler. Got to be a bit careful. So you can check kind of here, and then see how far you back, back you go before you start hitting this. Mm. Yeah, but these ones, these are a slightly nicer, you know, this was, this was an Axminster one. Got this during my apprenticeship, it wasn't it very expensive. So it's kind of flat, and you can kind of go to like, here, let's say, as in like, I can go to like there, yeah, and it's still flat. This one here, it's quite, nice, it's quite a nice chisel, I can go to like there, you can look underneath it, I can reach like off of the sharpening film and it's not shoved it over. Yeah, think about it, if I, if I was to do that, yeah. that'd be a disaster yeah. because I'm touching the bottom there, it's now, I exaggerate, it's now tipped it up like this. Of course the sharpie is going to disappear within seconds. Because you're going, oh yeah, that's great. What the hell are you doing? You're now scratching this on the underside of there. Yeah, so you've got to be a little bit careful with Japanese, you know, chisels that you do. The actually aisles, they're so long that why the hell are you going all the way over there anyway? You've got to have a handle over this side. You know what I mean? Never ever kind of do that. And that's why you never pull these kind of back. Like no chisel is ever going to be able to do that. Yeah, it's a real no. Plain blade. It is flat, but a plain blade going down like this, like that would be fine. But you get to maybe this grit's taller than that. It's just that's why you don't tend to do that kind of stone. Water stones, they're always different because there's not one right next to the other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you, you don't know if this is going to bump up on top of this. This is why you must do it like that, and you must be kind of as far in as possible that you're not doing this and tipping the thing over. Yeah. So that's why you've got to be a bit careful with chisels, but never doing any of this. It's, the handle's got to be kind of along the side. And if you're not sure, just kind of hunker down and kind of look at it and go, okay, how far can I go before it clearly kind of tips it over? And clearly that's not what you've got to do. You've got to kind of have a look at it underneath. This one's pretty close, that one's kind of fine. So for the Japanese chisel, do I have to go all the way up the stem? Or just no, 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 but they should be, it, it should be like this one that's really nice, it should be flat low spot and then obviously it gets higher kind of over here so there's kind of like not no man's land but it's kind of around here i can easily because i looked at it before i flattened it i looked at it and go i can see a shadow kind of under there until i go to like you know like there or something but that's fine when i'm doing this but just be aware of it and i have seen uh, there's another student down there that there was a bit of like a lump of material kind of here that it kind of rode up and i was like ah oh, you're gonna have to angle grind that off so sometimes that you may have to just use an angle grinder and get rid of that lump there so that you're just dealing with the bottom of it. You've not got like this random lump here because it's supposed to be a low spot. It's not supposed to be a straight line because you don't really need it with these. You're not going into huge mortise holes and stuff like that. Yeah. So just be aware of it that you're not, okay. that even by going to like here with yours, if there is a lump underneath there, it's going to influence it. But you just need to kind of look at it. You just need to put a straight edge. Just get a straight edge and just put it on here and be like, ah, it's bumping it up like that. I need to get rid of that lump. There should be a low spot kind of here and if there isn't, you need to make one. 
essentially. Okay. And you can't file it, it has to be with an angle grinder because yeah. it's so hard, you can't, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, kind of file it. So that, but you guys won't have that because you've got the HVI also coming to Okay. Yeah. Even with the HVI, you're trying to, where you're trying to maintain yeah. the concave, it's you go as far as you go as far as possible. Yeah, yeah you always go but with it, with any of the blades. You're gonna you're gonna go as far as possible. So don't worry about you're not using that part. You're gonna use it kind of later on when you're kind of sharpening and stuff like that. So don't worry. It's like you are gonna use that grip, but you can't use it here because you're just gonna do gonna do more damage. You're gonna kind of tip it up back somewhere. Yeah. So like I said, have a look at your plane. Like you're gonna have to disassemble your planes a bit. Let's see, block plane's pretty straightforward. But you need to undo this kind of handle, kind of here, to undo your plane, you know, take your blade out. So take that off. This guy comes out if you when you are doing your plane blade, but I potentially do like the underneath first, because all of this kind of governance kind of comes out. So what, take the, the blade out. I'm just saying like after you flattened it. Yeah. Yeah, do the flattening first. With the blade in. With the blade in, and make sure it's kind of backed off. Yeah, exactly. Just retract the blade back, and then you know you're not kind of hacking and ruining your blade. Essentially, you shouldn't be anyway. I doubt they'd send it to you with the blade kind of sticking out. But I'm just saying about kind of how you get to the blade kind of part of it. So this one's not like massively complicated, but it's just kind of one of those one of those things. Um, I'd have to look at your different. I think I think the ver like this. I actually I know your your you've got the veritas. You both got the low angle. No, have you, got, have you got a low angle? Yeah, the angles. Oh, so you've got the lineal, so you have got the same as it. This one's straightforward, that's just undo that screw here, essentially. And that guy kind of pops out and the blade just kind of comes out, it's pretty straightforward, that one. Yours is going to be like, the, you've got the Veritas low angle. It's going to be the same principle as this. It's got the same kind of mechanism here. The blade falls into a kind of pin, if I remember rightly, and it's got another kind of handle that goes on top. It's not handle, it's like the blade thing. It on the but again, we'll go through this kind of later on, but if you do want to disassemble it, you know kind of roughly what's going on. I think I have the Veritas as well. Yeah? Yeah. It's very similar. Nice. Cool. All good? Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll come through and get you kind of set up. I'll stop the video there.